You know, I try to show my subjects in a very self-confident and self-determined pose because I think that that's amazing when somebody feels really self-confident and happy with themselves and truly connected to themselves. Hi. Hi, Kinga. How are you? Great. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Um, I still can remember when I photographed you in your window and during lockdown. Yeah. And that exactly. was really in the beginning. I mean, you were some of the first uh, artists that I photographed and we couldn't enter the buildings. We, we had to mm. um, speak through the window. Exactly. Yeah. But thank you so much. That was <laughs> wonderful of you to, to take part of that uh, uh, in, in this project. Thank you for making me part of your project. I remember it was the beginning of the pandemic, right? And we had no idea how long it would go on and we were so scared of the virus. So we exactly. were just saying hi to each other from the window to the backyard. And it was, yeah, I wish I could have asked you up for a coffee, you know, because our first encounter was so nice. But oh. yeah, we were still taking care of the rules and following them very well. And yeah, it was yeah. interesting. Hmm. Well, now I have a glimpse in your studio, which is beautiful. Thank and I've you. been, yeah, even before this, uh, before my project, I admired your work so much on, on Instagram. I've followed you even before on Instagram and I find your pictures, your colors uh, so beautiful. And, mm -hmm. um, and now I would love to hear your story. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because you 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 also you studied uh, communication. Exactly. Like my background is not in the arts, but I come from a background of communication science, which seems very far away. But in the end, it is not really because in communication science, it's also about conveying a message and uh, communicating through a visual art most of the time, if you choose what I have done in advertising. So it's not so far away, but it's still a very different background compared to what I do now, yes, exactly. But as a child, uh, because I always ask artists, I want to, mm -hmm. uh, it's always interesting to know as a child, if was there yeah. already then uh, an interest in art? Did you um, show some interest then? Yes, you know, I, I was thinking about your questions beforehand and I remembered that my first um, intuition to become an artist was when I was four years old. And at that time, I was observing my older cousin, how she was painting a really bubbly figure, like a really abstract bubble of, I don't know, like maybe a, a sponge or something. And then she added a face onto it. And in my head at that time, I, I imagined what this figure could do next. Like I was playing almost like a movie in my own head of uh, what could this figure be doing in their world, in their context. And that's when I realized that this is amazing. She was creating something from nothing really. And for me, it urged me to start thinking about it more like in a story or, or a narrative. And I felt that this is something amazing to do for other people, you know, to be able to communicate through something so simple and to make them feel something. So at that point, I was like, wow, I think I need to become an artist. And I was really young at that time. I remember, I think I was four or five years old. And that's how all of this journey began, really. I mean, Obviously, for a long time, I had no idea that this would be my career because my parents were saying that this is not a sustainable and secure career. So I studied something else and I tried to work in, in a corporate environment. And I always came back to painting in my free time, you know, and it was not until I think my late teenage years, really, until I went and bought my first canvas, my first acrylic paint um, to experiment. So up until that point, while I was a child, I was just playing with whatever I could get my hands on. Then in my teenage years, I bought my first canvas and I started painting whatever I felt like from cocktail glasses to sunsets to abstract portraits. 
And then yeah. after I finished my studies in university and stuff, I, I figured that this is something I need to pursue full time because there are so many sides to it and it takes up a lot of time if you want to do this professionally. So I, I actually quit my day job at the time. And since four years, I only focus on doing this. So yeah, Amazing. it's a nice path. Yeah. And what a what a brave thing to do to decide on you know to to quit the job and to say well this is what I wanted to do. Yes. Was that a hard decision for you? I think it was a very um, intuitive decision, but it took me a while to get there. Like I remember thinking about it for maybe four or five years, really. So. I, I mean, it takes a bit of preparation, you know, you don't just quit your day job from one day to the next because you still have your rent to pay and you still have uh, food to buy. So what I did was really to prepare myself in a way of putting money aside for, for a while. And then when I saw that now is the time, like I cannot really progress in my career at the time anymore because it's not making me happy. Um, I, I had a, a, a deposit of funds. So really if I, if it didn't work out, I knew that I could just always fall back on that. And in the worst yeah. case, I would just go back to my previous career, but it was not making me happy. So I said, I'm 30 years old. I, I have some funds. I can do this now and just try and see, you know, mm -hmm. and really as soon as I started walking along this path, a lot of opportunities just ar arose from that, like from from telling what I'm working on currently, for from sharing my ideas, from sharing my process, and this is how I attracted more and more people into my into my world, into my new uh, career, really. And from there, it just grew like almost by itself because I said yes to every opportunity. <laughs> so yeah. yeah but but you said now when you were younger, you you just painted, you just experimented. So you are then a self-taught. Uh, artist exactly. mm -hmm. yeah. yes exactly I, I so find it was this, a lot of practice <laughs> yeah but I I, yeah. I find this so amazing that I I talk to some artists that uh, you know that say this that they say mm -hmm. well you know I taught my I'm also a self-taught photographer and this is why it's sometimes yes. so interesting for me but this part where you say you experimented um, and you you just taught yourself basically do you think this has given you this uh, way of of thinking of what you want to, the message that you want to give. Is mm -hmm. that where it started, do you think? I, I think that it has been a process. Um, I remember at the beginning of my career, like four years ago, when I started doing this full time, I usually painted happy memories like you know uh, a nice memory from a holiday where I was with friends where I felt good where I felt liberated where I was trying to almost recreate these feelings in my everyday life that I used to have like when I was on holidays but then a very specific um, happening um, changed my entire glance at my career like if, if I'm allowed to share with you openly it's yeah. a personal story so I I traveled to Jakarta a few years ago and at the time I was traveling with a man and I I get to experience firsthand what it meant to be a woman somewhere completely different in the world you know and we were in a hotel and I noticed that everybody was greeting him and showing him like um, attention and asking if he needs anything and obviously they perceived me as almost like his add-on so they did not greet me they they did not even pay attention to to what I was speaking or, or, or wanting and it went so far as that when I was at the hotel restaurant and I asked for a bottle of water um, the servers there who were all male they completely ignored my request you know I was waiting for that bottle of water for half an hour and it was really hot and I was waiting and uh, I was almost getting angry because you know I thought it's just a bottle of water how 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 hard is it to to serve me a bottle of water and then I asked like what is, what is the problem why why am I not getting any and then they said ah, at the moment there is no female employee available to bring me the water and I was like uh-huh I, I I could not 
understand what what was happening, you know. And it took me a while until I realized that they sent me the receptionist to bring me a bottle of water. And then at that point, I was like realizing that my mission as an artist in a comparatively free country is a lot uh, bigger than 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 just myself like my responsibility is so much bigger and larger than I had previously known so at that point with this experience I decided that I need to become a lot more political in my work you know because I have this freedom and I have this possibility to speak up and to um, raise the attention to these topics and I, I feel that this is something that I I need to do since then. Like it it yeah. it was just one small glimpse of a totally different world, and it showed me how much privilege I experience here in Austria. So at that time, my entire career and my my motives also changed to more political. Um, messages mm. and because you asked if my motives have changed or if my style of painting has changed i it did um right now i focus a lot on women but i also try to portray queer and non-binary and trans people so i try to be a lot more inclusive than i was before and i try to you know show um, from from my perspective and not like it was previously only the male gaze onto the subject. I tried to get away from that and turn more towards the subjects themselves. And I try to show this connectedness and the celebration of life in a usually Mediterranean setting because that's where I feel most comfortable. But I still try to show that there is a struggle in these structures and that there is a lot of political discourse that needs to happen on several levels and this is where I start in my work really so yeah well this is amazing because I've also I, I read on your website also you you have a very strong message uh, and and I can see that also in your paintings and I can also see the strong feminine um, uh, representation in your in your uh, painting mm -hmm. so this is wonderful and it's it's always for me so wonderful if an artist can do what you're doing now, um, make the difference or tell the story or raise the awareness to, mm -hmm. to this um, message that you want to, or this, and, and also this experience that you have. But, um, and also your, your, um, your colors uh, are very vibrant. And you said that that's the Mediterranean feel almost. Yes, exactly. What I try to do is to show almost like um, a bubble of a feel-good moment. You know, I try to show my subjects in a very self-confident and self-determined pose because I think that that's amazing when somebody feels really self-confident and happy with themselves mm -hmm. and truly connected to themselves then there is also the possibility of connecting to somebody else right so i think that by showing this pure state of being true to oneself i i can turn the discourse and talk about also the 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 way there because usually we wear a mask in our everyday lives right we we, we try to um, live up to a certain role that is expected of us in society we try to hide parts of ourselves that are uh, maybe judged or or um, not welcomed and i try to to ask these questions towards the subjects and find moments where they feel free, where they feel good about themselves, where they are truly honest to themselves. So I, I can celebrate life and the connectedness to other people as well. And I choose to do it in a Mediterranean setting because I love Mediterranean lifestyle. Like yeah. that's, that's where I feel the happiest. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in these settings, I, I can also have the discourse of the hard stuff of the hard topics about the structural problems about um what bothers us on an individual level really but this is uh, really what i also from your paintings what i find find was that because it's so colorful and it, the colors are so strong and it uh, it looks um it looks confident you know the 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 
paintings, the the figures in the paintings, and it's it's like you say, it's it's almost a celebratory mm -hmm. feeling that you give. And um, yeah, this is beautiful. I love it. I love the colors. I mean, they're just just looking at you there in front of your paintings. It's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, when the change came now for you, when you decided you had this specific um, message that you wanted to portray um, did you, where did it start for you did you was it a sudden change from what you painted before was it did you go through a process there where you had to figure out how you would want to portray it I think that it's still a work in progress when I started um, focusing more on on people and and portraits i quickly noticed that i tend to draw or paint them in in almost a 2d version like i was working on a canvas and i i portrayed them very flat almost which lead to the um, perception that it's almost design like i have a small photo like i maybe this here i can show you Oh, yeah. So I started very flat almost, like they were like, you know, there is no depth in the character or in the body. And from here, this was a painting from 2019 and now we're in 2022. This was a very small painting actually. And now I have changed to like room size oh, wow. painting. Yeah. And maybe I can show you from a closer perspective. Mm, please. Oh yeah, I I see. Mm. I still work with the cubistic style almost. There is those body parts that are really defined and colorful and working with each other very clearly. But I try to add a lot more depth to the body, you know. Yeah. So, and I also have become a lot more inclusive in my in my work. I. Mm try to portray also um, other backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, because I think that that's also necessary to give a glimpse of everybody who is out there, you know? I don't, I don't aim to be an elitist um, artist. I, I try to make it inclusive and, and show that there is diversity out there. So yes, and, and I have changed a lot in my, in my style since... But, yeah, yeah, but this is interesting because it then, it, like you say, you want to include now and it's it's then making it more relatable to everybody, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that they can identify themselves in in certain characters that you paint. That's the that's the goal. I think that representation matters a lot. And yeah. I still struggle and I notice all of my blind spots, you know, that we were raised in a certain way and I I was not excluded from society. I grew up in these settings as well. And I am relearning now how I look at all of these topics. Like how do I represent a woman? I I, I also like to show them naked. I also try to strip away the clothes, but from a totally different point of um, perception, I, I want to make the woman feel and show that they're self-confident and it's not an object. It's a it's yeah. a self-determination there. And um, in this uh, work that I just showed you, I also tried to talk about um, solidarity among women um, because we were raised to compete against each other, right? And there are a lot of um, subtle topics that um, I try to address that all ar arise from patriarchal structures. So even by showing three naked, perceivably naked women, um, I celebrate sisterhood and I don't look at them as, as something that serves to please me really. So yeah. yes, I try to change the discourse there. Wow, you, you, really, you really think about um, many aspects of, of womanhood. Because that is true that you say, you know, there is this, uh, there, there should be more solidarity between women, but yet there is this, um, 
this competition and and uh, yeah it, it makes total sense what you are doing it's wonderful so mm -hmm. you really tap into to all different aspects of of womanhood really i i try to have myself as a starting point obviously i can only um I can only show images through my processed view, although I try to include other perspectives as well, but it's still a very personal touch to all these topics because these are things that also um, address me. I am also, um, or I grew up objectified in a way, like I, I had to play certain roles. I had to live up to certain expectations of me. And at some point I decided, okay, um, I, I acknowledge that they exist and I, I choose to behave in a certain way within this structure, but I can also, since I am an artist and since I have this freedom especially, I can choose to do it differently or at least show that there is something that we choose, right? There is a, yeah. a, a certain choice in accepting the structure as it is, or there is a choice in doing something differently within this structure and to change the, the system slowly from within, basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that it's very political despite being very feel good, you know? Yeah. But do you do you now when you start? Is it does it start with uh, this maybe an idea that you have or this this question that you have in your mind, and then from there do you then create your painting? Well, usually it's either something that bothers me, like um, there is a topic that I cannot really wrap my head around and it's a lot of femicides happening in Austria in the recent years and one particularly happened almost in front of my house so it's in walking distance that a woman was murdered at her workplace so this is something that that bothers me for a really long time so I, I try to process it, but there is really no way to process something like this. So what I do is then to try to channel this anger and this, this helplessness almost into um, a celebration of life, which happens through showing um, subjects dancing in a painting or holding hands or hugging or kissing or caring for each other and, and helping each other within this almost community you know so we are there for each other and the spirit remains free despite all of these terrible things happening and through discussing these topics and through showing this in the paintings i hope to raise more attention to the struggles that there are right yeah and so, um, how much how much do you uh communicate how much do you think is important for you to communicate your paintings through words or do you leave people to mm -hmm. sort of uh make their own interpretation I like to ask what people perceive from my paintings before I give any indication on what's going on, really, for me. Because usually what happens is that they add another layer that I haven't even thought about before. So I enjoy that process a lot. And I always find it very helpful to also notice where my messages get through and where maybe not yet. Or maybe there is another interpretation to what I have been doing, which is also amazing. So usually I try not to say too much, but in this case, since we discussed it right now, I, I felt that it was important to say that there are a lot of symbols and there is a lot of underlaying meaning there. But if somebody really just wants to perceive a happy, feel good painting, yeah. Also fine, you know, like I think that's the beauty about art that you can interpret as much as you want, but it's not necessary to always see the, the ugly truth below. It can yeah. be a really happy painting and it can make you feel good. And if you sit in front of it and have a coffee on a Sunday with friends and then they notice that there is maybe 
a nail or a chain or some detail that I worked into the painting, then there is stuff to talk about, right? And I really find that important that a painting has some depth to it, even if you stare at it for an hour, that there is still something that you can discover. So that's my aim always. And I also think with art, it is the, the place where you are is what you see or what you hear. You know, when even in music, it's uh, so... Uh, maybe that is what makes art so wonderful is that it keeps revealing uh, mm -hmm. as as you look at it, you know, from from the perspective where where the where the onlooker is or the appreciator Absolutely. is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's a very very smart um, statement because you can only see where you are right now, right? That's yeah. true for every life situation and it also is true for art. If you are heartbroken, you will most likely look at the paintings where there is couples on it or there is some kind of liberation happening and so on. So the, the possibilities of interpretation are endless, but you can only see it from your perspective at the time, but it can definitely change with, it, with time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you've mentioned something. You said that your parents thought it would not be a, a good idea to paint, <laughs> to, to be a painter yeah. or, pref, uh, uh, you know, full time. But what, what would your advice be for a young um, person who, who maybe studied art or wants to become a, a full time artist? I think the most important thing to wrap your head around is that it's not just painting. Like, mm -hmm. I wish it was just creative work, but really more than half of the time, I have to take care of something that is not related to creative work at all. Like, for example, um, marketing, social media, uh, networking, um, talking about what I do, um, doing my finances, doing accounting, uh, communicating with my tax guy. There is a lot about this beautiful life that I lead as an artist that is really not creative at all. So yeah. if you want to be an artist, try to think about it a bit like running a business, because in the end, that's it. If you want to make a living from being an artist, then it's a business. Mm -hmm. I, I know that it's an unpopular uh, perception to look at this profession like, like, an, uh, like, yeah, like an enterprise or like a company, but in the end, you manage yourself and you manage your, your finances and you manage your time and it's branding a lot of branding so this is something to to consider that it's not all just creative work unfortunately and the second is probably to to prepare a strategy um on where you want to go and to plan accordingly like which steps are necessary to get there and that includes sharing your work online, showing what you're working on, um, talking to people about what what bothers you, where you're coming from in, in your ideas and your thoughts, um, experiment also with materials and try to find a style that suits what you try to convey. And, and yeah, I think those are the best advices that I can give at this point. Yeah, because you are very, you are very um, active in a very good way on Instagram. You really show what you're doing, and um, and you do it very interestingly. And you know, the, like you say, you you demonstrate sometimes where you paint and you show. And I've seen now also that you've invited people to come to your studio. Yeah. So is it important for you to people see this behind the scenes of you or, or more your personality comes through very strongly in, in your Instagram page, for example? I think it's um, necessary to understand my work, to understand where I come from in my thoughts and in my everyday life. Like, what do I see? What do I touch? What do I feel? What do I experience in my everyday life? Because it all ends up being in my work one way or another. So this is a very um, easy way for me to add the depth to what I'm doing because I can paint portraits, I can show a lot of different personalities, but if you don't understand 
how I processed it, where I'm coming from, what are my personal struggles, then it will just be a nice portrait right but if you understand that i am queer that i have a, a lesbian relationship since two years that i am insulted on the streets for being with a girl or holding her hand um and that that my background for example in hungary it's illegal to be shown in books for children when you're a queer couple etc all of these topics kind of add up to my my personal struggle and also to which questions I ask in my work. And that's what I'm trying to add. It's not necessarily just that I eat pizza or that I um, did my hair today, but it's mm -hmm. to show you my, my world, right? So yeah, I think social media allows this possibility to, to be open in this way. Yeah. And I think this is what makes it so interesting that it's not just showing off your paintings but really showing where it comes from you know and and, and what the meaning is behind i love it thank you so <laughs> much really yeah. um, but now tell me kinga what is your wish for the future Ooh, that's a big one um I think for me personally, I, I miss my family because they are in Hungary and in Romania. And I used to travel between all of these countries every year. But since uh, COVID and the pandemic, we didn't really see each other. So I think I just need to spend some time with my relatives and to also travel more because I miss having these different languages and cultures around me, you know, just to travel half an hour and then we're in another country and there is different food and there is different language. I really miss that. And I, I want to travel more also for work. I really want to do artist residencies to exchange more with international artists as well, to talk to different curators, to have their um, perception and to grow from discussing all of our, you know, our paths and ideas. So that, that's something I really want to do. I want to laugh more, which is something yeah. I noticed during the pandemic that everything is very depressing sometimes. And I just really want to laugh more with my friends and have good company around me and travel more and laugh more and eat well and be happy. And on a, on a global note or in a global perspective, obviously I wish for structural changes like, the, the the private part is always, you know, we always feel that our personal struggles are the most important, but really we're just embedded in a big picture. And I hope that um, the structures where we are on living in, in patriarchy and almost suppressed in a lot of parts of the world, I hope that that will change with time. And I want to see more female leaders. I want to see more queer leaders. I want to see more non-binary and trans leaders. And I want the world to be more empathetic and respectful towards everyone in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what and I this wish is, for. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is a wonderful wish. And this is really what uh, artists, uh, what you are able to do, you know. And I think this is why it's so important that we also celebrate uh, art and artists for what you are able to do. Thank you so much. It's yeah. uh, it's a really big responsibility, and the more I know, the less I know, right? So I'm still. Sometimes I struggle with this responsibility, but then there are days where I just celebrate it, and I really love yeah. to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great that you that you find uh, that you found your voice in the sense that you can communicate now what you want to communicate, and I think this is what will um, also bring all the wonderful work and more wonderful work from you, definitely. Mm -hmm. I love that you opened your studio to people. <laughs> I think this is, no, really, yes. it's, it's very, um, I think it's, it's also a way of letting people in in this world and, and, and open conversation, definitely. It's wonderful. Mm. And there is still a lot to, to talk about, you know, I, I, I notice depending on who comes to visit, I, I have to start at different levels of conversation, which yeah. is 
really amazing also to to have these insights into other life realities and i and i appreciate it very much and these studio visits have been very fruitful so far i i only had a few but they were really rewarding and at, at, after every studio visit i'm i'm really high on energy for the rest of the day just because i noticed that my my work touches somebody emotionally and that's the biggest reward that that i can get really and obviously the compliments as well <laughs> yeah. no but i think also people communicate differently when it's like that in a small environment and it's it's more mm -hmm. intimate so you know people would communicate better about personal things for example than they would have maybe in an art gallery so I think it's wonderful that you give that opportunity because I think it's also good for women to share, you know, in, in such an environment. Mm -hmm. I think it's also a very private setting, as you said, because you come yeah. into my studio, it's also our home, like it's one room in our, uh, in our private house. So I feel that you get a lot of homely vibes. As soon as you enter, I offer coffee or a drink or water or whatever. You take off your shoes and then you're just stripped of these um, expectations that maybe you just carried outside right it's a very friendly setting as well so um, mm -hmm. there there is no need to show off anything it's just us here and you can touch the paintings you can go up really closely discover all the details and then in another layer if, if we feel like it we have all these heavy discussions but it's not necessary yeah. either right yeah no, I understand, but that's what makes it so wonderful. And of course, you're stimulated by the colors around you, because I think color is also something that that um, stimulates, you know, as a certain mm. and, and brings out certain reactions and so so. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. Now, Kinga, can you do a shout out for a restaurant or a coffee shop in your area? Or if you know yes. somebody who wants to, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. No, I actually, I I have one particular in mind that I love a lot. It's called Masserie. It's in the ninth district, and it's a small French coffee shop um, with a really beautiful interior. It feels like you're in a pharmacy of the old kind. Like there is all those little small bottles and the smell of croissant in the room, but the interior oh, wow. is very very beautiful and the coffee is amazing and I love to hang out there because it always feels like a short holiday so I oh, can really mess mm -hmm. yes it's really nice okay mm -hmm. I'll put the link in the description it sounds Thank lovely you. I'm going to visit the... <laughs> I'm <laughs> yes, going to go, go for a coffee <laughs> yes, yes, yes go for a coffee or a quiche or whatever French dish you love there is a lot oh, okay <laughs> But thank you so much for your time. It was so wonderful to talk to you and so wonderful to see you in your in your environment where you paint and uh, um, and uh, yeah, um, all the best to you for this great work you're doing and um, may all your wishes come true. Thank you so much. Right back at you. All the best to you. And thank you so much for thinking of me and having me here in this format. Well, of course, I'm a mm -hmm. I'm a big admirer of Please your work. Please come for a studio visit. Just I'm going to. Go, I'm definitely me. coming. Yeah. No, I yes, do I great. have to call? Do I have to? Uh, I'll I'll write to you before. Yes. And just uh, let's let's what? just set a date and the time and the and yeah, the place is obviously here, and yeah. I can take the address and I will be welcoming you wholeheartedly. Wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Kinga. Great afternoon. Thank you. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.